Given a choice of buying more land or building another dairy, I think I'll build another dairy because I like cows. But, but yeah, we've bought a lot of land uh, since we came here. Uh, a little bit of security. Uh, certainly when corn prices were high, it was attractive to try and, and grow some of our own feed. When we grow crops, sometimes we use different types of crop, we manage it different, and we kind of use that as a little bit of an experimental exercise so that we can show the other crop farmers that this is what we want to grow in the line of, of silage varieties of corn or different types of, of alfalfa, uh, and maybe that they will pick up and, and do that for us, you know? And by and large, that has worked very well, you know? So we take the leap of faith and we take, do the little bit of the experimenting ourselves. So we were looking at uh, building a crop rotation that would allow us to maximise the use of manure with minimising the amount of time we have to store it. So growing like a winter rye, harvesting it in May, uh, then putting mud or muck out on the fields and growing a, a short-term corn for silage or a sorghum or whatever. Maybe growing some winter wheat, you know, uh, or rotating and swapping with other farmers on some winter wheat. One of the things that, that actually works very nicely in, uh, in dairy farming is it enables our local crop farmers to get out of that soybean corn rotation. And because we'll harvest our corn silage now, probably by the end of August this year, maybe first week in September, they still have the opportunity to plant a winter wheat in the stubble. And some of them have used that as an opportunity to break that corn bean cycle. I think the dairy cow is the ultimate recycler, you know. She takes all these long stem forages, you know, alfalfa, corn, silage and stuff, that humans cannot digest and cannot process. And she can. The byproduct of dairy cows is dairy manure, you know. We have had to educate our crop farmers because they were very used to using a large portion of chemical fertilizer. They didn't really want to break with what they call tradition. Uh, but we had suddenly a lot of waste to get rid of. We didn't have all the land we needed to get rid of it. So we had to help them out with the costs of getting that on the fields. Then they realized the value of that. Not just the, the immediate value, but the residual value the next year, the year after. The fact that when we pump 18, 20,000 gallons of manure in, right into the ground, it is the equivalent of one, one and a half inches of rainfall, which sometimes in this area, can be the difference between a crop success and an average crop. Uh, a lot of farms have a nice two-year rotation. They grow uh, soybeans. We pump all the manure into the soybean stubble in the fall. They grow a crop of corn silage on that the next year, which we harvest. And they have the residual, 30% residual fertilizer from the pumping of manure that will grow the next crop of soybean for them. So they have actually almost no fertilizer costs for two years other than the cost of pumping the manure. It's stored in, in earthen-based uh, lagoons. Uh, we do separate the sand that the cows are laying on back out of it using gravity, and then we store it in ponds. Anytime you smell manure, it's ammonia gas you're smelling. Uh, that's a fertilizer. So what you're smelling is a loss either to me or to the crop farmer. So we minimize the amount of times that we actually have a smell or an odor from that manure. The fact that we pump it out and inject it right into the soil, we eliminate all that potential loss into the atmosphere. And uh, we want to maximize the value of that manure to the crop farmer or to ourselves. Years ago, I, I read an article where they said there was three M's in dairy farming. There was meat, milk, and manure, you know. Uh, we've got to try and look to turn, right now we've turned two of those into a revenue source, meat and milk we got to turn all three into a revenue source at some stage in the future. When that will happen probably will depend on the price of energy. When it becomes cost effective and we can see it improving our bottom line, we won't be afraid to try it, even in a small way on their own farm to generate some power, you know, or in a, in a much larger, more commercial scale.